in a moment at the movies without Ebert, Siskel, or even that dude Roper. But you've got icy robots, so that's something, right? Very different circumstances. This would be totally awesome. Summer begins. It's time to live up to our name. This is our Hail Mary. With the end game. You know your teams, you know your missions. Look out for each other. Oh, God. What's up, regular size man? <laughs> Avengers End Game. Rated PG 13. Tickets on sale now. Hey kids, it's me, Icy Robots. This isn't something that I have done before, but I was I was so into Avengers Endgame that I felt like I wanted to come back and do do like another review. This is going to be kind of kind of on the lo-fi tip. I'm just going to I'm just going to blather on about the movie for a bit. I'm down here on the Earth base. I think you just heard Ursa the Wonder Dog jump off the couch and head out of the room, but I, I'm up here doing whatever, you know, so I thought, why don't I sit down and just kind of jibba-jab about the things I enjoyed about the movie. If you have not seen Avengers Endgame yet, go do so before you listen to this, because I am going all in on everything. This is going to be spoiler heavy, so if you are listening past this point. I, I don't know what to say. It's kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of on you now. The spoilers will begin coming at any time after this point. So, you have been, you've been heavily, heavily warned. I, I liked the movie so much. It was so epic. It was so big. I got to see just about everything that I would have wanted out of it, which was which was terrific. Let's uh let's maybe like we'll just start at the beginning and we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there. That seems like the logical the logical starting point of all this. I I dug it at the beginning when you saw how bleak the world has been, but I don't I don't know if losing half of all the people would be as devastating as it was in the movie. Of course, it's going to be incredibly devastating, but the the tale starts off five years in. I think that by now, things may have gotten a bit more organized. I think on the personal level, everybody would have been, uh, everybody would have been just destroyed. But you see, like, you see, like, Major League Baseball's not playing, which I am not so sure. With half the people gone, they would just bring people up when the, when the wars were going on and stuff. They, they still found a way League of the Own. I don't know. That's like a minor nitpick. I really enjoyed seeing what things were like, though. I thought that, I thought that that was uh that was super cool. When Thanos snapped everybody out in the last movie, there was this website where you would go in there and you just hit a button and you would find out if you'd have been, you would have been snapped or not. And I was not snapped, but the the entire rest of the family was snapped. So I was I was like Hawkeye left all alone by myself and I I definitely thought about that and thought about the pain I would feel so I don't I don't think that they were like way out of line by showing the world in the state that it was but I don't know I still though Hawkeye Hawkeye had the saddest story imagine just like your whole family gets snapped out and you're you're left it was it was sad too to see him like he turns around and he doesn't know where they are because he doesn't know that people are getting snapped, even though I do think he would be kind of aware to some degree of this battle against Thanos. I I would think it would be on the news. But anyway, it was still, it was still super sad. And uh, then from there, when the Avengers go off and they go after Thanos, I I was really interested to see, like, Thanos with his, uh, with his sack going around. And he was collecting what looked like they were, like, cactus fruits. You know, I don't... I don't know if you're familiar with those. They're like little buds that are on the top of a cactus, and I guess you can like you can pull all the prickers out and eat them. I've never I've never tried it myself, but I, I've seen them for sale at the at the flea market or at the at like the uh, at the Mexican grocery store over on Sebastopol Road. I'll see them there sometime. I wonder what they're like. They look they look a little uh, gelatinous on the inside. I don't I don't know how you prepare them either. But anyway, that looked that looked like what Thanos was. Um, was collecting, and when Thor chopped his head off, 
like, I don't know, 15 minutes into the movie, I was, uh, I was like super duper surprised. I couldn't believe that, I couldn't believe Thanos was dead and the movie was over. I'm like, man, that was only like, um, 15 minutes. What a, what a bait and switch. But, um, they... They discovered that Thanos had already destroyed the stones, so there was no, there was no going back when all of a sudden, like, Ant-Man appears, and it turns out that he, he wasn't snapped, he was, in fact, in the quantum realm, and he comes, and he, like, he tells them this idea for a, uh, for a, uh, time heist, they call it. I like the, I like that time heist. I thought that would, that'd be a cool name for a movie. There was this, uh... What's the name of that one story that Mark Miller wrote? Time, time something? I, I forget. I, I think I'm actually confusing this time one and this other one, Super Crooks, that he had. I think I'm, I'm combining them in, in my head and I'm calling them like Time Crooks. But they, they called this the Time Heist. And what they did was they were going to go back and they were going to get the stones before Thanos. And they were going to snap him out of existence. A lot of, a lot of snapping in this, which is, which is fine, you know, I don't mind a little, uh, I wish that snap would have come out better, let me try that, eh, it's just not, just not happening like I, I would have liked, one of the things I did like in this movie, I liked this quite a bit, was the, the fact that Nebula was like, she was like the main character, I, I guess I would say Tony Stark was the, was the main character, but Nebula got a gigantic push, she went from being like, she is so small, in the world of comics, that I don't even know if I've ever even heard of Nebula until these, until these movies came out, but I also have to admit that I don't really, uh, I don't really partake in the Marvel outer space comics that much. The, the whole thing confuses me with, like, Krees and Skrulls and all these things. I don't know. It always, it always confused me, so I, I kind of stayed away from it, but I, I had never, not never even heard of Nebula, and here she is as one of the main characters in what is like uh, the biggest movie of all time, I I thought that's cool because I I appreciated uh, Karen Gillan's performance as Nebula. She was she's always like an animal, always just growling and snarling at people. And in that in that one movie where Thanos like separated her as punishment, like he took her apart, I was like, that is such a neat special effect. I I like how she she looks all smooth. I think that they. They must put, like, silicone on her or something. Like, silicone flaps to, like, cover her head. But I I appreciated her being such a such a big part of the movie. I like it when... I like it when an underneath guy gets a push. We always get to see uh, the main event guys. But it's neat when... It's neat when an underneath guy gets to push. Like when Landry gets a chance to kick the uh, game-winning field goal in, uh, in Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights is the best. Love that show. That was... That was dope. Like, you could definitely see the Landry Nebula connection. What else? What else was great? The whole thing was great. It was great when they went into time and they started, like, revisiting things from the past. I I thought that was a lot of fun. It was a creative way to sort of pay an homage to where they've come from. The Captain America versus Captain America fight was... That was, uh, that was just terrific. That was... That was great stuff. For a moment, they teased that you were going to get another elevator fight, but it it didn't happen, but instead you got something completely different. And while not equally as cool, that elevator fight is one of the best things in all of Marvel that they've, that they've ever filmed. Two of the best things Marvel has ever filmed are in Captain America Winter Soldier. The first one is the scene where Fury's in the car, the gunfight in the car. That is... Terrific, and then the elevator fight is amazing. Then when Captain America jumps out the window and escaped, that's that's amazing. Cap is Cap is my favorite. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Captain America is my moral compass. When I'm faced with a decision and I don't know what to do, and the when the ethical answer is not immediately popping out at me, I I always look back and I think, what would Captain America do? And over time, I've been doing this for years. It used to be used to be the comic book Captain America, but now over time it's actually evolved to the point when I go, what would Captain America do in this situation? I I actually picture Chris Evans in my head. Which is really a testament to the good work that he's been doing with the character. Captain America is a legendary figure in comics, and bringing him to life, that's... 
that's no easy task, and Chris Evans has, he's really done it. He's done it to the level that Hugh Jackman did when he, uh, when he brought Wolverine, or when Ryan Reynolds brought, uh, Deadpool to life, where they have nailed it absolutely perfectly. I, I can't imagine anyone else in the role. I've heard rumor that John Krasinski was thought of at one point, and I cannot imagine what that would be like. Jim from The Office is Captain America. I shall pass, I guess. Uh, let's see. The, the ending that they gave to Captain America. I'm gonna be jumping all over the place when I do this, so I, I apologize. I did try to start off in a, a linear way, but when I, when I get on a topic like Cap, I gotta, I gotta see it through the, the ending that they gave Cap was so sweet. It was so nice. Seeing him there on the bench, having the opportunity to go back and live the life that he would have lived if not all these all these things went down. It was it was beautiful. I will not be ashamed to admit that I while I did not shed a tear, I almost shed a tear. I I cry at movies a lot. I don't care. I have emotions. I I let them out if need be. But um, the the whole family was there, and I didn't want everybody to see me. I didn't want 2.0 to see me crying about Captain America in the movie. But I I kind of do this thing when I'm trying to hold back a tear. I'll uh, I sort of inhale deeply through my nose, like, and I I know they can hear me doing it, and I know that they know what's going on. But I hope that they respect the fact that I'm trying to I'm trying to keep a manly facade. In front of them, but it was, it was just, oh my gosh, it was so, it was so sweet, it was so nice to think of him back there with Peggy Carter, them just being together and having a life. I wonder about the husband that Peggy Carter had. I think that, I think the Captain America may have been like a time-traveling homewrecker, but I, I can imagine that he feels like, after all I've done for the world, and just, uh, due to the fact that, in reality, I was there first. Maybe, maybe it's okay for me to go back in time and give it another shot. I hope that the guy who was uh, Peggy Carter's original timeline husband, I hope that, I hope that he was okay with it. But the way, the way things kind of seem with the time traveling of the time heist, it seems like it's on that theory where you open a new timeline entirely when, when you time travel. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but we can imagine that maybe like there's a timeline where, where Haley Atwell and this guy are, are married, and then this divergent timeline, Captain America and Haley Atwell are married. Haley Atwell, who's, who plays Peggy Carter, if you didn't know. I'm sure you know, but I don't want to... I don't want to confuse anybody. When Cap handed the shield over to Sam Wilson, that was that was a nice moment, too. In the comics, this happened at one point. Cap retired, and he he gave it to the Falcon, who became, who became Captain America. There have been many different people over the years, who have, uh, taken up the mantle of Captain America. I think there's been, like, Captain America, there was, like, an evil one named, uh, John Walker, who later became the U.S. agent. There was one who I think later became the superhero Jack Flag. I'm not sure about this entirely. My, my knowledge of Marvel lore isn't as deep as my knowledge of DC lore. I, I feel like it's pretty extensive, but compared to some of the Marvel experts out there, it's, it's only a drop in the bucket, but uh, it was nice to see Sam get that main event push. To see him go from being the Falcon to being the honest Captain America. And it'll be interesting to see how, going forward in the movies, that turns out. Or if they might spin this into, like, a uh, Disney TV show. Which seems like seems like what they're doing with, uh, with a lot of these things. Another thing that they're going to spin onto Disney, I think, is Hawkeye. It was really cool to see Hawkeye finally pick up the Ronin mantle in this uh, movie. He's He's been ill-used. Jeremy Renner is a dynamite actor. He's really, really, really good. He's been great in movies like Wind River. He was great in American Hustle. Dude is fantastic, and he was finally given the chance to, um, the chance to shine as Hawkeye. It seems like it may have been a idea of the movie, like... In the time heist, let's pair up a couple of the legendary main eventers. Like, you got Cap, you got Stark, you got Thor. These are the legendary top dogs. Let's let's finally give the rub to some of these mid-carters, maybe even lower mid-carters, like Ant-Man, like Nebula, like the Falcon, like War Machine. Let's, 
let's give these guys a bit of a rub so that when we move on to other things, the territory is kept strong. That's uh, that's wrestling lingo. I apologize for for that, but I think that you you understand what I mean. That was that was neat to have Ronin on the streets of Japan taking out Yakuza. I I can definitely appreciate that. My favorite run of Avengers comics was Brian Michael Bendis's New Avengers, and in that during the Civil War they. They split off the Avengers into two teams, one led by Luke Cage, one led by by Tony Stark, and the Luke Cage team eventually, they get Ronan amongst them. Hawkeye had, he had died during the, I forget what they, Avengers dissembled, that's what it was. He was killed, and he he came back through the, uh, the power of the Scarlet Witch, and he adopted the identity of Ronan, he didn't go back to to being a Hawkeye right away, he wore like he wore this black and yellow suit, and he had a sword, and he he stabbed people up. It was it was pretty fresh. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back. And I don't know, I'll talk for a few more minutes, and then I'll just like upload this directly. Hold on, we'll be back. If you're looking for adventure this summer, escape with Marvel Comics, fight crime with Spider Man, meet the Fantastic Four, and watch Captain America in action. May the Force be with you as you battle the evil empire in Star Wars. Discover the secrets of the South American jungle in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And with Marvel Comics, you're never alone because they can go with you in the car or to the park, even on a rainy day. Marvel Comics are your ticket to fun and adventure. Well, uh, that was weird. That just got cut off. I wish that Marvel would do more to support the comics in the, uh, movies. Like, why not at the end just post something that says something to the effect of, for more Avengers fun, go to your local, uh, comic store. I don't know. It would be nice. It'd be nice, especially since they're all, they're all the same company. So why not, why not support, uh, another part of the, uh, creative team? But at any, at any rate, let's see. We just talked about Ronin. We've talked about Captain America. We talked about Nebula. I was super stoked to see Nebula have such a big part in the movie. I thought that was I thought that was completely unexpected, but also completely fun. Let's let's talk about Tony Stark for a minute. I don't really like Tony Stark very much, but I don't think that we're supposed to. I think that he is supposed to be kind of kind of a jerk. Like we know he's a genius and we know he's the best, but he's he's kind of a jerk too, but uh that's cool, man. Not everybody has to be, like, a 100% likable guy like Captain America. We need all sorts, all sorts of different stuff to, uh, to make a team. Tony passed in this movie. It was, it was sad. Not as sad as seeing Captain America as an old man, but still, I was a bit saddened. But, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they found some way to bring him back in the comics. He's, he's died before and been, uh, brought back as, like, a hologram. I think there was a a whole period of time where he was like an Iron Man suit with a with a hologram head. That's something they could do pretty easy. They probably wouldn't even really need to get Robert Downey Jr. back to do it. I'm sure they could just do it with CGI. Downey has all the money in the uh, in the universe now. He came out so well from these things. At the beginning, it was it was like a, a small bit of a risk, but uh, it panned out amazingly well for Downey. And for the Marvel uh, universe as a whole, I I don't know if everything wouldn't have gone as well as it was if it didn't jump off the off the gate so quickly and popularly with uh, Iron Man one. That movie was that movie was great. Iron Man two not so much. Iron Man three not so much either. But they they did have some cool points. I would have to say honestly, overall, I feel like Marvel has more misses. Then they do hit, but I I think I am not really in the uh, popular side of the argument with that. But if you ask me, most of the movies are fine. They're maybe a little better than fine. They're average. But they, they've they had some really good ones, too. Thor Ragnarok was really great. Winter Soldier was amazing. This was great. The previous Avengers movie was great. Black Panther was a lot of fun. So it's not like... It's not like they completely stink, but it does feel like they're really hitting... Hitting a, uh, like a creative stride nowadays. Uh, what else? Black Widow died? 
That was completely unexpected. I thought that either Captain America or Iron Man would die. I thought maybe both, but I I never, not in a million years, expected that the uh, Black Widow was gonna die, especially because they have a movie about her on the way. I think that's I think that's one of the few that they have confirmed. They've they've kind of kept the future quiet, like they should, because you don't want to give away too much when uh, your movie's called Endgame. And it might be the end, but, um, I, I don't know. I think that Scarlett Johansson's been really good in these movies, but I, I think it could be time to recast if you're going to do a new movie. Maybe you want to take it back to the, uh, to the early days of her as a spy, make it gritty. I don't know. I don't know who I would cast, but it's, it's something to think about. I remember hearing at one point that Emma Watson was cast in the movie, not as Black Widow, but as a... That's kind of a side character, but if they decided, hey, let's make uh, Emma Watson the Young Black Widow, I think that would be, I think that would be definitely interesting. What else happened? Oh, Thor. Fat Thor was amazing, and I was really happy to see that Korg survived the, uh, the snap. Korg is his, like, his big rocky partner from, uh, Thor Ragnarok, played by Taika Waititi. He was, he was, like, playing Fortnite in this, in this, uh, movie. I've only played Fortnite a couple times. I don't really have, like, a knack for those, um, like, first-person shooter type things, but it seemed fun. I can imagine being a kid and, like, really, really, really getting into it. I, I dug how he, Thor, was all, like, big Lebowski'd out. I thought that was, I thought that was pretty funny. Chris Hemsworth is, he's a good comedic actor. He's, like, a dreamboat, uh, Hollywood, uh, hunk, but he, he has good comedic timing. He's a... He's a funny, funny guy. The The end battle of the movie didn't really do much for me, to be honest. These big animated Marvel battles aren't really... They're not really my jam. I know that a lot of people like them a lot, but it's too... It's too cartoony for me, but I... I was excited to see that Wong showed up for the big battle. I... I'm a big Wong head. I think he's, uh, I think he's really a cool character. What I like about Wong is that he, he sticks to his values. He sticks to his oaths. He said he's going to protect the Sanctum Sanctorum. And that is, that's exactly what he did. He protected it. He kept it safe during the, uh, during the whole thing. It was neat to see him show up with all the, uh, all the magic users from, uh, Shaolin or wherever, wherever they're from in Tibet. It was also neat to see, uh, Tilda Swinton in the movie when she, when she struck the Hulk and knocked him out of his uh, body, knocked him back into being Bruce Banner, I thought that was, I thought that was really neat. I thought this movie was a lot of fun. It was super long, but it, but it flew by. There are so many things to touch upon. And I've also, I've also like listened to a couple different shows where people are talking about this, like uh, the big picture over on uh, the Ringer Network with Sean Finnessy. He's a, he's a reviewer I like, and I've heard couple other things, and I'm at the point where I'm getting, like, my thoughts confused with what may be other people's thoughts, if you, if you know what I mean. I should have recorded this, like, the day that it came out, just, just to be ready, but I, I don't know, it's been, like, all about this movie for so long, it's weird to see, it's weird to see it's over, I don't know where Marvel's gonna be going in the future, I think that I think that the big characters going forward will probably be, like, Black Panther and Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was only in this movie for a few minutes. I was I was surprised by that. I recall hearing that she filmed her scenes for this before she filmed Captain Marvel. In this, she had the uh, she had a short haircut, really similar to Annette Bening in Captain Marvel. And I wonder if that was the wig or if the long hair in Captain Marvel was the wig. I hope at some point she... She goes for the more Carol Danver-esque, like, uh, shaved side mohawk. But, uh, we'll see what the future holds in that regard. We're gonna, we're gonna be starting a whole new, uh, cycle of adventure with Marvel. And I think that's something fun to think about. I wonder if it'll be, I wonder if it will be as successful as this part has be. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be huge. It's Marvel, it's gonna be gigantic. But it's hard to imagine that it'll, that it'll be as big as this is. This movie's like... This movie's gonna make like five hundred billion dollars at the international box office, and that's just that's just crazy for a company that was bankrupt not too long ago. So I don't know. There you have it. I just wanted to uh, I wanted to talk about the movie because still, I was still just like geeking out about it because it was so it was so fun. But uh, this is me 
Icy Robot signing off for the uh, Endgame Special Spoilerific Edition. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs>